Hey guys, it might be time to give Windows ME another go. What we are checking out today is the latest version of the Windows ME update CD. Thanks to Michael Bryce, he's been working on this for 14 months. We have over 140 patches, updates and hotfixes and it's a fully automated installer. Before we insert the disk and I will walk you through the installation, let's have a look at some benchmark results so we can compare the performance of our retro gaming PC before and after installing these updates. In 3 d Mark 99 Max, we're getting 13,828. In 3 d Mark 2000, 12,989 points. I have some results for GL Quake at 1024 by 768. We're getting around 246 FPS. And in Expandable, I'm seeing around 93 FPS. The test system is a Pentium 4. We have a GeForce FX video card and a Sound Blaster Live. So now let's insert the disk and give this a go. Let's insert the disk and here we go. We get a beautiful menu. We can browse the disk, we can update Windows start the installation and we can also view the documentation. I highly recommend that you check out the documentation. It's really well done, but in this video you will get the gist of how this works because I will walk you through the installation. Let's go update Windows. We get a confirmation screen. It recommends that we backing everything up and then here's some information. The computer will restart many times. It detects we've got Internet Explorer 5.5 and we have a choice. We can update that version or we can upgrade to version 6 and I'm choosing the second option to have the latest and greatest software. And here the same thing with Windows Media Player. I'm choosing version 9 and off it goes unpacking some files. And here already our first restart. We are back and what I like is we can see a sequence here. It counts the number of reboots. On this Pentium 4, the installation is slow enough that we can see all the individual updates. I'm not gonna point out every single one of them, just a few highlights that I think are interesting. For example, here is a problem printing large documents to a USB printer and here Intel Pentium 4 CPU not identified correctly by Windows ME Direct 3D. So it seems that these are some general updates all around improving the operating system. Let's have a look at another one. Patch for Web TV, an issue with scan disk that runs even for Windows shut down correctly. We've got patch for hyper terminal. There's something here with 16 bit programs, cannot open more than 120 files simultaneously. USB floppy drive missing when you run the add new hardware wizard. So lots of interesting patches and the next reboot. We are back resuming installation sequence number two. There's a patch for Firewire. We've got some uh, networking stuff going on here. Computer may not hibernate with more than 192 megabytes of memory. Volume settings may not persist after a restart. And there's an update in Telepoint 4.1, that's for the mouse. A spin down request does not spin down a hard disk on Windows ME. And yeah, lots of interesting updates. And I think we will restart very shortly, there you go, restarting computer. Update sequence three, and we can see here it's installing Windows Media Player 7.1 and also some codecs here. And another reboot. Resuming installation, sequence number four, and here we're getting some codecs, patch for Windows Media Player 6.4, Windows Media, Windows Media Player version nine, Codec packs, so this all has to do with the media player. And another restart. Here we go, update sequence number five, and now it's time to update Internet Explorer. We're almost done, and yes, another reboot. 
Resuming installation, this is sequence number six. We're getting some patches here. Internet Explorer, your account is locked out when you view an FTP server with Internet Explorer, stack overflow, error messages, cumulative security updates for Outlook Express. So these are all patches to do with Internet Explorer, Outlook Express, online stuff, it seems. Lots of patches here, vulnerability, incurs an icon format handling, hyperlink object library, embedded web fonts. So lots of interesting stuff. Macromedia flash and another restart. Resuming installation, sequence number seven, DirectX 7, Visual Basic 5 and 6. We've got Visual C++ and Microsoft Data Access Components. And now we are almost done. There you go, installation complete. Please ensure there are no open windows and press any key to restart your computer. And here we are, the final reboot. It's cleaning up some temporary files and we are fully patched and updated. And now we're gonna have a look at the disk. There is a menu, browse this CD because there are components, patches and updates that go beyond what the automatic installer uh, offers. Here's one for the pinball game. Let's have a look, there's a readme file. No music in 3D Pinball in Windows ME. So if that's something that concerns you, install that update. Under components, for example, lots of interesting stuff. DirectX might be something that interests you. I'm using version nine for this project, but there are lots of other components that you might be interested in. And now let's run those benchmarks again and see if we can see any difference. 3D Mark 99 Max, we're getting now a score of 13,791. This is just a tiny bit lower, but it is really within the margins of error. In 3D Mark 2000, we're seeing 12,930, which is pretty much the same score that we got before. GL Quack, we're seeing 245 FPS, so that's one frame less than we had before. A difference really not worth getting upset about. And in Expendable, 93.4 FPS. That is also pretty much the same result that we saw before. So guys, there you have it. I walked you through the Windows ME update CD. Thank you, Michael. This is a really amazing project. I didn't have any issues. It's fully automated. You just select a few options in the beginning and then you can walk away. It reboots automatically, no other keyboard input required. So very impressed. And yeah, the end result, we have a fully patched Windows ME. Gaming performance, pretty much exactly the same what I saw before installing the updates. Maybe a hair slower, but really everything is within a margin of error. I will put links down below where you can download this ISO and burn your own disk. And I would love to get some feedback. Now, Windows ME is not nearly as popular as Windows 98 SE, but maybe after being fully patched, it's worth giving it another shot. So report back, let us know how you're going with this update CD. And uh, yeah, again, big thank you to Michael for investing so much of his personal time into this project. Very much well done and thank you from the community and from me. And yeah, that's it from me for this video. Another really exciting news to share with you guys. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.